What's up folks, Gabe Montgomery here, Tin Horse Money YouTube channel, and I got a treat for you. My buddy Ron here just got him a nice, nice boat. I've been kind of gawking over this thing. So we're gonna do a walkthrough, gonna break it down a little bit, talk about this boat. This is a Vexus VX21. Tells you what it is right there. Really sweet boat. Um, so Ron's coming out of a Ranger, and what are, what are some of the differences you've noticed from your... You've been with the Ranger in a Ranger for quite a while. My uh, whole life, basically. Your whole life, yeah, basically. From my dad had a Ranger when I was a kid uh, to just here in the last month. Um, and uh, the first thing I want to say about the Vaxxas, I mean, obviously, I'm excited for a new boat and I love the boat. <clears throat> but um, and I think a lot of the Vaxxas people feel this way. We didn't really leave Ranger we stayed with the old Ranger people. And uh, the old original Ranger people are who built this Vexus. Um, so I really feel like I've kept it in the family. And, um, and uh, as we're going to talk about, the, some of the things that are, have been thought out in this boat um, is what you would expect from the old Ranger family. I'm really proud to be a part of it. Yeah, man, it's a it's a beautiful boat. Um, I, I honestly haven't gotten this close to one and I can't wait to fish out of it. It's impressive. So, uh, so what are the, what are some of the differences you've noticed in the Ranger versus, versus this versus okay. the Vexus? Yeah. Uh, some of the major differences on how the boat was built. Um, uh, number one, um, you'll notice it's, it's a, it's a taller boat. Um, I fish big water a lot, so I, I need a good big water boat. But the uh, fuel tank on this boat runs lengthwise underneath the floor. Um, is one tank, 57 gallons, and it's baffled. Uh, and the reason for that is for handling in rough water. That way you don't have gas that's, that's sloshing back and forth. Um, and then the, the whole platform of the boat, boat is built on top of that. Um, so you end up, you've got a, you've got a deeper V that carries through, um, you've got a larger, deeper cockpit area, um, a lot less spray coming over the side of the boat. I've already noticed even here in Southern Illinois. Um, and, and that's the first thing you notice when you're in the boat is, is you really feel secure inside the boat. Nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah that's, uh. I noticed that, that it is a deeper, in fact, that's the first thing I said to you. I'm like, this boat seems like it sits up a little bit higher, just a, just yeah. a deeper, deeper hole or deeper yeah. V boat. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, you want to start at the back or start at the, it, the front? You might as well start. We'll let's start, start at the front. front. We'll We're going to break this sucker down. We're going to look at it, all these little goodies he's got. I, so I really like this. Uh, the first thing I noticed is the uh, steps coming into the trailer. They're, uh, they're out of the way. They seem like they're tucked tucked away really nicely. And you can look at these. They're just two little platforms to get you up. Yeah. Which it, is really nice. I call them my old man steps. Heck yeah. We're all um, old men now. But you'll notice those steps come up into a little area you can step on. And with today's boats, with all the electronics, getting into the front of the boat with the electronics there, you know, you need uh, you need a little path when you're launching to, to get in the boat. And it, it works out that's, pretty good. That's very nice. I like that. Got a nice little trail going up there. So let's talk about your graphs, man. What you got going up here? Yeah, I've got, I went with, uh, uh, I, I've been a Lawrence guy my whole life. So I, uh, with the advent of Active Target, um, I decided to stay with Lawrence. So I've got two 12s on the front, uh, one of which will be dedicated to Active Target when I get that. Um, and so that's, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then other than that, it's, you know, your standard, standard applications with side scan and whatnot. I like uh, these. It's interesting how this is set up up here. You know, the different mounts and the, this piece here. Yeah. What's nice about that. That's a, uh, that's a Vexus mount. Okay. And what's nice is, you know, you have the plate that normally goes across that. Well, that plate is indented. So that the so that the whole set of units sits a little bit lower, um, as opposed to uh, the dual mount being on top of a flat bracket. So it just makes it uh, 
just makes it a little bit more streamlined. That's very thought out. I like that. Yeah, everything that Vexus did, they when they built this boat, when they designed it, they literally started from scratch, from head to toe, and and they went through every little detail. Um, and it, it really shows in some of the things that we'll talk about. That that uh, that bracket's one of them. That's yeah, that's pretty sweet. And then you got I see you got places like a cup holder here. You got some place for your tools. Yep. Recessed foot pedal. Let's talk about the the Lawrence Ghost trolling motor. How has it been compared? I know you ran an Ultrex for mm -hmm. quite a while. Yeah, but I've ran an Ultrex basically since Ultrex has been out. Um, the the major difference in the Lawrence compared to the Ultrex is number one uh, that is a brushless motor. Uh, so there's no interference with your electronics when you hit the pedal. You don't get that little line on your graph. Um, it just eliminates all of that. Um, second thing is when we get on the water later today, this is all, this doesn't spin around like the Ultrex does. There's just a little dial in here that spins. So there's, net result is there's less moving parts. So the motor is a little bit uh, quieter on the water um, and just seems to run a little bit smoother. Um, and then the third thing that I think is really important is the transducer on the look on the Lowrance trolling motor is interchangeable and that there's a little Allen screw on the nose there and then you can unscrew that and you can interchange different transducers. That, that one is uh, down imaging and regular sonar, and I'm going to be uh, replacing that with one that also offers um, side scan up front. But it's all, it's all one piece. There's no extra bracket you have to buy. You just unscrew that one and pop the new one in, and that's, that's it. And I think that's really, um, really handy. Man, that's great for, for grass, too. You're not catching that grass yeah, on your transducer. Uh, not catching grass or just you're not. I, mean, I don't know in my lifetime how many transducers I've broken up front from hitting stumps or rocks. And uh, that that problem will go away. So the lift assist that's on here, is it is it similar to the Ultrex as far as the ease of yeah. deploying? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's uh, that piston there mm -hmm. is um, pretty handy. It, uh, one nice little feature is, you know, as these trolling motors advance, they get heavier. And this has a little hook that the cable goes in when you lift your trolling motor. Nice. And that, that makes life a little bit easier too. That's great. And just the little, little things that make the, a big difference. Yeah. And, you know, is, and this is where competition is good. You know, all trucks had the market. And then, you know, Lawrence and, and Garmin figured and Motor Guide, hey, the, you know, we got to get, get busy. And this is where the competition thing has worked to the advantage of the fishermen. And the pedal looks a lot different on the Lawrence versus the Ultrex. Yeah, sure. it's a little, it's set up a little different. It, the good thing is it feels the same. Uh, when I'm running this trolling motor compared, I still have an Ultrex on my John boat. Um, they don't feel any different to me, which is important. Um, the, these, this switch here, it, you can, you can interchange on what side you want it, depending on where that's comfortable. I happen to like it on the left there, but it, you can, you can switch it to the right. Um, so the guys that are used to a motor guide mm -hmm. versus a Minn Kota, they've got an option. You know? yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, what I do like is the. The anchor button is on the same side as the Ultrex, so I'm used to that. And then these are these offer some different options that you can do with the trolling motor. I'm liking this carpet a lot, man, and it's um, this trim piece is it's pretty interesting. Trim, just like in your house, it's got trim all the way around the boat. Yeah, that's really cool. Yep. And then you've got a uh, deployable cleats here. Yeah, and the nice thing, those don't just pop up on their own. You got to pull them up. So you don't have to worry about accidentally popping one up and catching your rod on. Okay, I see that. Yeah, just pull them up, pull up nice and easy. Yep. And the the rod locker boxes—that's an interesting the shape 
This, yeah, and I wanted to talk about that. You know, we were talking about how everything was thought out in this boat. And we've all we've all been fishing, and you want to grab something out of a box, you know, some more tackle, another rod, whatever it is, and you lift your rod thing, and all your rods go flying off the side of the boat. You know what I mean? Well, with this shape here, you can... Those rods really don't go anywhere, and I didn't even have to take my strap off. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool. And um, most most of your rod lockers will come almost to mm -hmm. the the side rail there. Yep. So I can put two three rods comfortably on either side of that, and my hatches are still accessible without without making a mess. Let me look inside there and yeah. see what you got there. So no carpet in the bottom. No carpet in the bottom of the boxes. Uh, that's obviously for uh, to keep things from getting wet and uh, not getting mildewy. Um, on this side here, um, well, I, you could use it for a rod box. It goes up underneath there. Um, I use this just for extra life jackets and and uh, bolt tackle. Um, do you want to get up in here? Yeah, let's get up in there. Come on up in here so you can get a good view of it. Nice. And you've got, is this deck padded or? Uh, that deck is not padded, no. Okay. That's not. Um, that is an op option you can get. This is that C deck stuff, which the purpose of that is to uh, if it's raining and you sit down or it's wet, you're not going to get a wet butt. This dries almost immediately. That's a great idea. If you're messing with your tackle, you can sit right there. Yeah, this is my center box. Um, got tackle in here. I'm using this more for tackle than fishing rods. I am going to keep some fishing rods in here. I haven't really decided how I want to organize everything yet, but... Um, it's laid out nice. Yeah. Plenty of room to do how to organize it however you like. These are cool. These little straps kind of lock your rods in. Yeah, that's really that's a great idea. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of guys that have a truck with a camper shell on them and they hang their rods. They got a rod system where they'll they'll hang their rods up off um, the bottom. Yeah, and they've got those little straps like that. Yeah. And this side I use for my rods really. A couple features about this box. Uh, I, I've got, I don't know, 20 rods in there with room for more. Um, but what I really like is I have a shelf up here. And we all have those rods that, with whatever bait you happen to have tied on, that will get tangled up and everything else no matter what. I see an A-rig right there. So I've got my A-rig <laughs> and my deep crankbait set up on top. And there that... That's not going to get hung up in all my mess in here, um, and it just it's just really handy. It's well thought out. Yeah, I like the. It just makes everything makes yeah. sense. Your pistons are on the side there, yeah. not coming out of the middle. One more thing. See these tubes here? Yeah. For the passenger on the top uh, section of where they could store their rods, you can actually put a rod in tip first. On the passenger side. Let's look at that real quick. Yeah. If you look under there, that top row there, those rods can go in tip first. So just another little thing, utilizing the space of the boat to help keep things organized, which at the end of the day puts more fish in the boat. Heck yeah, that's nice. So you've got a little day box up here too? Um, yep, that's a little day box. Uh, what you're going to notice is the depth of these boxes. Um, because the boat is so tall, it, that depth is, you know, added into these boxes. So it just it's just more space, more storage. Yeah, more space and um, good problem to have. Heck yeah. Also, notice the channels. That's a solid inch from the from the top down to the bottom here for the water to drain out. This, the water, the, this bow was designed to shed water as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's nice. Everything's raised up right here, so you're not going to get any water. And it's, not only is it raised up with the fiberglass, you've got these nice seals on it. Mm -hmm. So, that's a great idea. It's well, everything seems to be w really well thought out, which makes sense, you know. 
the guys that have been the guys that build these boats have been doing it for quite a while yeah what was interesting is when i uh traded in my ranger uh william hopper one of the guys the original guys from ranger he was on my certificate of origin and it was the same guys on the certificate of origin for this boat which is kind of cool where'd you get the boat from uh clark marine sales uh in franklin tennessee just south of nashville tennessee super super nice guys um could not have had a better experience. They took care of me. Turnkey deal. Went down there, had a cup of coffee, talked fishing, came home with a new boat. It's pretty much business the way any fisherman would want to do business. So Clark Clark Marine Sales, Franklin, Tennessee. Check them out. Awesome, great. So this cockpit, it looks like a racing cockpit on or the or the uh, the windshield here. I like how that's slanted back. Yeah, a couple of cool things. Um, let me jump back down out of here. Yeah, a couple cool things on this. Um, number one, there's a little bit of space underneath the windshield. And we've all put a cell phone underneath here and it slid down. You can't get to it. Um, there's a couple little baffles in here. But anything you put in here, you can reach in and grab. You're not gonna, it's not going to get stuck in there. And if you had to take the windshield off, I guess you could. There's just a couple islands. Allen screws there. It's got a lot of nice cosmetic features too. You know, it's it's a blinged out boat. You got this little bar right here, and you know, of course, you got the plates on the side. Yeah. One, oh, that reminds me. One thing I haven't brought up yet. Um, this paint. Uh, you'll notice this now. They uh, Vexus does offer the traditional flake. Um, you know, like you see in the normal bass boat. This is hard case paint, and it. Uh, and I don't understand the the process so I won't try to explain it but basically this is the same paint that you have on your truck and when I was asked how should I I wipe my boat down every day after fishing I take care of it um, and I was told just treat it like a car and uh, so it's it's supposed to it's supposed to resist fading and all that kind of stuff that we're used to with as a boat ages um, and uh and i think that'll be true nice yeah all right let's make our way over here to this so you got the you got the big graph man that's nice so yeah you... that's the 16 and um it uh, yeah, let me turn that on because my gauges are also on my graph power on um this is uh the console uh, the reason I thought about going with 212s, but the the problem you get sometimes when you go with um, two graphs up front is they kind of get in the way. There's only limited space on, on any boat on these dashes. And when you get the, the unit spread across like that, it gets in the way of the gauges as far as seeing them. Um, so I stayed with um, the, the 16 in dash, and for me, that's that's plenty. I can divide that screen up four ways and, and and do whatever I need to do. Yeah. It's real clean looking. It fits in there nicely. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the smart gauges and the, and the Lorange units are all tied in with my mercury. Uh, so when I'm running down the lake, um, I can read my gauges, um, on my, mm -hmm. on my unit. Very nice. My trim, RPM, speed over ground. Um, I've got that on down scan. Um, you can set that up however you want. There's all sorts of different options within Lawrence to view your to view your gauges, which which is really handy. And when I expand that, you know, it's it's really easy to see when you're driving, even in rough water. Yeah, that's really nice. So you're focused on the front of the, I mean, everything's looking forward while you're yes. running. You're not trying to look down at a gauge to the right or the e left. It's, e exactly. Yeah, exactly. So a very safe feature. Um, to start and stop the motor, it was kind of funny. The first day I had this boat, um, me and a buddy put in, we had a little fish off out here. I just threw the boat in and um, couldn't figure out how to start my boat. <laughs> but it has a key fob. Just like your car has a key fob, 
that you can start your start and stop your boat from wherever. This also acts as a kill switch. I have a traditional kill switch, but if this is in my pocket and I go in the lake, this also acts as a kill switch. So it's a little extra safety feature there. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, so here's all of your switches and stuff down here. That's a unique. That's a, that's unique. Yeah, switches on top and f the fuses on the bottom. Gotcha, gotcha. Yep. Yeah, the bottom. The, these are the fuse. That's super handy too. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dig around in a compartment or anything. It's all just very well labeled. Yeah, very nice. One thing you need to do. It might be a pain is everyone who's ever owned a bass boat has looked under the console, like if they were working, and seen all the wires and go, oh my God, I'm afraid to do anything. I want you to get under there and look at the wiring underneath that console. I don't even see a wire, just looking Ex from here. Yeah, exactly. That's so you got, a, you got a hot foot in there. Yep, hot foot. And you got the, the trim. Yep. You got everything on the trim console. Trim and, and the hydraulic jack plate. On the steering column. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the seats, air ride seats. There's, um, there's literally, there's a little pump that comes with the boat, and you can adjust the air pressure in these air ride seats. I see that. Wow. And that's going to make a big difference in rough water. That's something that's been available on some of the bigger, like, walleye boats and stuff. And they've incorporated that into, into the, the bass boat world now. And um, it's a pretty cool feature. Seats adjust both passenger and driver, adjust forward and back also. And you got a huge center box there. Cooler. Cooler. Dang, okay. Wow. That's where you're going to throw your sandwiches. You still got ice in there. Yep. That is really, really nice. Good solid step for, for the co-angler, the guy in the back of the boat. Yeah, now I've heard this, I I have not heard this from Vexus, but I've heard it from other people, that this has the same insulation as a Yeti. So, nice. Yeah, if that's wrong, then I apologize, but that's what I've heard. And I believe it because the ice stays in there for days. That's really nice. Really clean looking. And let's talk about the floor here. Um, it's instead of carpet, you got the matting got, in there. Got the C deck and, um, and the obvious reasons, the C deck here on this step, and the floor is to shed water. And then underneath this cooler, there is a 12 inch drain. And um, with the idea of being water in the boat, water out of the boat, you don't want it standing around. And when it, as a guide, um, you know, if you guide in the rain, you got a tournament in the rain, and the, and in the next day you got the second day of the tournament, and that oh, the old carpet in the bottom boat, you know how it is. It stays wet for days, mm -hmm. you know, and you're shop backing it at night and it creates a lot of work and maintenance issues. Um, so that, that, that problem solved one nice, they made a really nice use of that space right there in the step. Nice little drawer. And I got, yeah, that's sweet, man. I that's, like that. I got all my tools and G juice and Let me get pliers. Yeah, come on. Look how big that is. I mean, that is a huge drawer. Jeez, you can almost fit a trolling motor in there. <laughs> That's nice, very nice. Yeah. With the slam latch. Which is slam latch. Um, so then you got, an, you got an additional glove box over here. Of course, you got the dual console. And this thing is cavernous. It's way deep in there. Got a little shelf on top. And you can just, you know, just for odds and ends and Golly, yeah. that'll that'll fill up. That'll be my drunk drawer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you got a little cubby hole right here, and that has uh, power in it. It's got a uh, USB port right there. USB port, man, that is yep. that is nice. So here's the here's the passenger area. We just kind of showed this earlier, but you got rod tubes in there for the co angler. Um, what you got here? What is this here? That is, there's an attachment that goes on there. And you can, as you put your rods in there, it provides this little clip system to clip your rods in. I honestly didn't like it. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just unscrewed it and took it off. Some guys might like it. It was just, I think the less stuff like that in the boat, the better. I just like a nice, simple um, 
I like to be able to organize stuff the way I like. Sure. Sure. You're the one that's fishing out of the boat most yeah. of the time anyway. So yeah. you got a, you got a custom net, I guess the net fits behind the seat, yeah, which is actually, nice. That's, not, that's just my net. Um, that, uh, came just, out of your other boat. Yeah. And it's a, you know, expandable net, but that's having a nice place put in that. There's a lot of room back there. There's a ton of room and you get, you've got all this room on around the seats also. Yeah. Um, to put, you know, whatever you're carrying for the day. Well, that is nice. Very, very nice. So this is your live wheel, live right? Wheel. This is pretty cool. There's another example of guys that built boats for years and years in tournament fish and then built a live wheel. And here's the result of that. We've got one lid, split live wheel was normal. The difference is you got these, these lids here. Okay. Wow. And with the, it's got the aerator in there, the oxygenator. Yeah, oxygenator. Um, but this has two fill levels. You can put it on normal fill like any live well, and the water fills up, you know, three quarters away or whatever, um, and functions as a normal live well. But in rough water, and when you got to make a run, you can put that on top fill, and it closes these up, and it will fill to the top of the lid. And so there's, so when you're on a long run, that water is not sloshing around in there and it really, really, really protects the fish. Um, so same concept as people that will put the little float noodles and stuff to pack down the top of their live well, you're getting water all the way to the lid. Lid all the way to the top. Very nice. All the way to the top. And I, I love how there's individual lids. Um, I know some companies had to have done like one big sliding yep. lid on there, Ranger but this, had that for a while. yeah, and it, it was kind of a yep. kind of a pain. But that is, yeah, that's pretty sharp, man. And, and when you're getting fish in and out of the live well at weigh in, you know, you can, you know, you, less chance of something jumping out. Sure, makes total sense. Got a nice divider in there. That's nice. I like that a lot. I, I this first time I've seen the live well system in these. And what's cool is if we ever fish at night, it's got a blue light. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one other little thing. All the lids have this little piece of metal there. That metal like slam, slam plate type yeah, of thing. Yeah, and that, you know, that way you're not chipping fiberglass or whatever. Yeah, see that? That's really cool. Just another little example of, you know, guys that have fished before when they built the boat. And you've got... Uh... Got your traditional rear compartments here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the challenge with these, honestly, is they are so deep. I haven't quite figured out how to best use them. I've actually put in a big Tupperware container in the bottom to put stuff in, just to bring stuff up. Uh, there's just a lot of room. Just And again, no carpet, all of them with drains in the bottom. The drains, which I've got covered up with stuff, have a little uh, grate over the drain, so you don't have to worry about a worm weight or, or something falling into the drain and- Plugging it up. And getting into your stuff. Very nice. Yep. Got the same thing over here, pretty yep. much. Nice deep storage. All right, let's talk about the battery compartment here. I'm gonna step down on the boat real quick. Actually, I'll stay right in here. All right. We've got uh, we've got a four bank charger. I'm, I'm seeing. Yeah, four bank charger. I'm running the 31 AGM for my cranking battery, and to run my electronics. There is room for a fifth battery here. A lot of guys are running uh, two cranking batteries in parallel because of all the electronics. Um, the reason I'm not partly is I have a jump system installed in the boat, um, so if you know, I run my cranking battery down. I can switch that to jump, and it'll jump off the trolling motor. That's batteries. that's super handy. Very clean down here. A lot of space. Um, so, are your pumps underneath this plate here? The uh, the pumps for the for the Raptor, the Minkota Raptors, are back behind here, and okay. then the pumps for the everything else is right here. Yeah, it's all. God, this boat is so deep. Yeah, you got all. I mean, you got access to everything right there. Mm -hmm. Plenty of working working space. It's, it reminds me of the uh, an older. You know how an older vehicle was so much easier to work mm -hmm. on versus yeah. a new vehicle. You got that kind of space. Yeah. Just uh, 
a lot of room in here. It's it, very, it very is, thought you out. Know, the simplicity is really kind of, you know, nothing's overly complicated. You know, you don't need complicated to go fishing. Um, simpler things are, the less things break, the easier they are to maintain. Very, very clean. And you've got the the Mercury Pro XS yep. four stroke on the back. Yep. Everything's ran ran really clean. Let me jump down off here real quick. These are the Raptors. Okay. These are the Raptors. Now here's here's uh, uh, the Raptors are Minn Kota's version of power pole, uh, hydraulic system as opposed to uh, their talons. But you'll notice they're connected directly to the boat. There is no bracket sandwiched in between the jack plate. Um, and it's that's it's rock solid, uh, which will lengthen the life of the Raptors. Those bushings won't wear out in there as quick. These transoms are all built with, I think it's an, if I'm wrong, I apologize, but I think it's an aluminum plate that's built into the transom with the idea of accommodating um, shallow water anchors. Um, and if it's not an aluminum plate, I know there's something designed in there to accommodate. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. You don't have any, you got less drag, less fatigue, less bolts, just thing, you know, yeah. less things to get loose. And, and what I've noticed is uh, trailering down the highway. You know, I used to always look in my rear view mirror and my power poles would be doing this off because the, the brackets give. Um, there's none of that when you go down the road with this or going across the lake for that matter. Nice. Very nice. Yeah. What's nice little feature here, a little voltmeter that's there all the time. I can always monitor my batteries when I'm out in the garage. Little, little handy yeah. little feature. You got some of this C deck back here. Uh huh. Very very simple. Rear of the boat. Uh, very clean. The water doesn't come in here and stay. Any water that comes up here, like when you slow down, is shed immediately. Uh, course, yeah. So it's not. There's no splash well. It just kind of yeah. rolls back off. Yeah. This course is the battery charger. You got all an automatic uh, live well plug in there. Mm-hmm. It's a nice feature. Very nice. Well, man, I I appreciate the walkthrough. There's a there's a lot more to this boat than I realized. You want to, anything on the trailer or anything yeah. that we missed or the, the trailer? Um, really solid trailer. Uh, vault hubs, and what that means. Um, there's a special grease in there, and I had this on the Ranger also. That grease, when you're going down the road, heats up, turns to oil, and then, you know, it works that way. And then when you stop, it turns back into grease. Long and the short of it is 100,000 miles. Uh, it's supposed to be. You don't have to worry about it. On both sides, there's, this is not waterproof, but they do. They have made use of this space uh, for a compartment, like if you've got uh, wheel chalks or whatever you want to put in yeah. there. Very nice. And then uh, parking brake on the trailer in case I ever have to park this if I'm traveling and I'm on a hill or just for safety parking brake yeah I, I really feel a lot more safe with the parking brake yeah. spare tire sits right under here spare tire good got good, the same rim on it good solid jack got the swing away tongue on it yep nice good winch so man really clean boat really really clean boat I'm impressed with it it's really, really nice. I, I see why you made the purchase, man. It makes total sense to me now. Yep. A lot of good features on it. Um, so there you go, man. I hope you guys enjoyed that. A little bit lengthy, but we wanted to cover everything inside, inside and out. Um, if you've got any comments or any questions, leave them in the comment section. And um, I talk to Ron pretty frequently, so I can send them, I can relay those questions to him or he can actually answer them on the YouTube channel. Yep. Um, but and if I don't know the answer, I can get hold of Axis and get an answer. That's right. Yep. That's right. He can he can make a phone call and get those questions answered for you. So thanks for coming along. Appreciate it. We're we're gonna um, we're gonna go put this thing in the water here in a little bit and get out there. The, <laughs> the ice just thawed out, so we're kind of itching, but we want to take some time and show you this pretty sweet platform, man. It's it's impressive. So uh, hey, if you appreciate the content, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Hit the little bell notification. That way, anytime I'm dropping content, you'll be the first to know. And till next time, um, we're gonna we're gonna dump this sucker in the water. Go catch a few fish. See ya.